Well, hope you wonderful people are not absolutely sick and tired of recruiting just yet because we are dragging on locked on recruiting expert Brian Smith onto the show to talk about the 2024 class and everything Michigan State football recruiting. Let's go. You are locked on Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This recruiting episode of Locked on Spartans is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Folks, this has been an incredibly busy week in the world of college football recruiting. So naturally, we are bringing on a guy who the Locked on Podcast Network is just beating the brakes off of this week. It is our recruiting insider. It's friend of the show. You guys already know who this is. It's Brian Smith. Brian just great to see you. I, like genuinely mean that. Great to see you. Uh, what a week it's got to be for people of your ilk right now. Um, we are we are blessed and cursed all at the same time. So <laughs> it's an optional it's an optional word. You know, you know, it's kind of sure. like you sometimes uh-huh. you drink some of the fireball on the show. Sometimes you don't. It just depends. But it's it's part of the deal. Um, it's fun though, man. I, I enjoy it. And uh, yesterday was wild. Absolutely. But not for Michigan State, which is nice. We already covered that on our show, that it was a pretty low drama day, all things considered. We got a surprising quarterback flip. That was cool. We got someone out of the transfer portal. But, look, this is what I've also been preaching on the show as well, and I want you to gut check this. So right now, the 2024 class, 19 commits for Michigan State so far. 24-7 sports has them rated as high as 38th in the nation. Rivals has them as 51 and then on three at 54. This is a class with just one consensus four-star player in Nick Marsh. Rest Young, Brady Pretzlaff, those are two guys that are rated four-star on some services, three stars on another, but that's where we're sitting at right now. The key number, though, is 19 commits for this class, because when Jonathan Smith came to East Lansing, we're sitting at, I think it was like eight kids, give or I'm take one each way. And so I'm feeling, look, th- this cannot be the solution moving forward. We're rated like in the 50s or as high as 38, but I gotta say, with like the limited amount of time Jonathan Smith got into where the class is right now, I'm over here chalking this up as a win for Michigan State. Am I just a Michigan State slappy saying that, or do you kind of agree with that sentiment right now? What's your outlook on the class? Uh, There's two parts to that. On the perimeter and getting the quarterback, the kid from Illinois, et cetera, Mm -hmm. they're much further along than what probably you or I thought. Number one, did you really – what odds did you give a month ago Michigan State keeping Nick Marsh? 20%? Oh, boy. I was a little higher on that, but it was not like 90 or 80. I was more like 45, 55. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They kept him. I think he's a future NFL player. That's a great start. They got mm-hmm. Brinson, the guy from Tampa. I know they got some other DBs that are talented. Getting corners is hard when you have a coaching change, especially in the manner that it happened up in East sure. Lansing. Yep. To keep some of these kids, I, I can't complain. The one problem in this – is usually it's ironic. It's where state traditionally does well in the trenches. We might need you to add weight and put on a helmet, but at the same time, <sighs> oh god, <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. I know it's concerning. It's concerning, but there are opportunities for you at Michigan State. I, I assure you, but the skill talent is pretty good. This next class and especially in the portal is going to be really lineman heavy. It has yeah. to be, and yeah. that's okay. I mean, did you really think this was going to be a smooth transition? I mean, it couldn't have went any more thud than what happened in the fall. So uh, Michigan State's better right now than what you or I thought it was going to be. I'll speak for you on that. I mean, no, it, I appreciate it, that. Yeah. It's just, so good for the Spartans and actually good for the Big Ten. The Big Ten's better when Michigan State's competitive. What we saw this year, eh, not exactly what I would call competitive. Not that fun, no. Like, the end of the year game, Michigan State versus Penn State, like, that would have been a really cool game when we go into next year, and that game can mean something for the 12-team playoff. But, uh, Brian, I was there in person, and we stuck around (laughs) from the kickoff till the the, the second the clock hit zeros at the end of the fourth quarter. Um, Not delightful, so I'm looking forward to getting to better days. Uh, I hope that there was something involved with that to help it make go better, because otherwise – 
Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave some, it. Some, uh, well, what, what they call adult beverages and also uh, some help from our friends at FanDuel made that game worth oh. sitting around for four quarters. So, uh, yeah, it all worked out in the end. But, no, it's it, it was not fun, but better days ahead. But, yeah, that's a good point you bring up about the trenches. Both sides of the ball, too. I mean, God, you're right. I yeah. might be playing a little bit of three technique here uh, for Michigan State. <sighs> In the fall, yeah. If David Stone's not going to do it, then fine, I'll step up and do it. But, um, yeah, that is going to be interesting to see what they're going to do in the transfer portal. But let's not kid ourselves. A lot of these guys of the 19 are Oregon State flips, you know, guys like Rustin Young, Kike Burnett, uh, Andrew Brinson is a guy you named. Of the guys that Michigan State has flipped from Oregon State, most of them by and large are three stars. Is there any of them that really move the needle for you, or you're looking at these guys' tape and you're thinking, Okay, that's actually maybe a little better than what we expect the rating to be. Um, I know the Brinson kid because he's from Tampa. Yep. And I I even I remember I asked him, I'm like, okay, man, I'm just gonna be real, real clear here. Why the hell is a kid from Florida committing to Oregon State? Uh, yeah. and he looked at me and he goes, You know what? They recruited me hard and they were a good staff. And I was like, Okay, that's that's a cool that, we're cool. And then Sweet. of course, all the the shenanigans happened at Michigan State and his coach leaves. But he trusted the coach. So I think out of everybody, he's probably the most important because, quite honestly, if you have a situation where that coach isn't, you know, he disliked the campus or whatever, that's one less guy to get. He can play corner. You can never have enough of those, especially those Florida corners. You want you want as many as you can get. Brinson can flat out play. He can play receiver if you wanted him to as okay. well. Um, the other, the young kid's really interesting. Got the length. Well, yeah. Let's see what he can do. And again, it's so important especially think about it. Oregon's bringing beef to the big 10. That is going to be an impact. Like they're going to steamroll yeah. a lot of teams in the big 10. Yes. They're not quite Ohio state, but they're close on talent. So this, if you do yeah. not load up in the trenches in this next class, don't call me and ask me to go to the Oregon game. Okay. Fair you enough. Know? That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Cause uh, it will not happen. I don't need that in my life. No. They need to get a lot of guys up front. And then it's next, like they need 10 plus alignment in the next class. And and some portal help, but I think overall, getting a kid like Young, he can move, maybe be your left tackle at some point. Worst case, right tackle. You got to take that, bro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they they overachieved. If you take nothing else from this podcast, and I know everybody wants to mm. win now, and I get all. Of that, course, yeah. And I and I completely understand. I'm not exactly the most patient guy either, but considering the circumstance. Jonathan Smith won the day and his staff. You got to give them a, a golf yeah. clap on that. I mean, it was it was pretty impressive to me because I thought they were going to finish with like 14 kids. Get to no, 18. It, you know what I mean? Like a couple of those kids are pretty good. Yeah. Congrats to them. No, it, it was nice. And also, too, just like a nice little cherry on top. We didn't have all the drama that a lot of other programs did with yeah. flips and are they going to commit? But like, and I understand that a lot of those programs, you know, they're flipping four stars and five stars, and it's very fun, but Excuse me for being a state fan that didn't want any more drama than we already saw this fall. Like I, I was okay with the very sleepy Wednesday for early signing day. So that is a nice little bonus was, was pretty cool. Um, right. I want to get a little more into the mix here. I want to see if there's any other diamond in the roughs you like with this class. But first, I'm sorry. I got to kick you to the bench here. I, I hate doing this, but I need to talk to people's ears off about game time. It is the greatest ticketing app out there. And if you don't believe me, guys, just try it for yourself. I mean, it is a pain less operation that they run especially when you're just rolling up to the game if you're going into the venue for a sporting event a concert a theatrical performance go look at their last minute flash deals they have some of the best deals that you will find out there on game time you also get an actual picture of what your actual seat is going to be and then two taps and then bang the tickets are just sent right to your phone they're not emailed to you you don't have to rummage through your inbox looking for your tickets wondering oh my god are they going to get here i have no service outside the stadium no they're, they're they're zapped right to your phone it is so so easy with game time that you will not believe it again just try for yourself if you don't believe me also save yourself some money as well because when you download the game time app create an account and use code locked on college that's all one word locked on college it's going to get you 20 dollars off of your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on college for 20 dollars off it's download game time last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed and let's get Brian Smith back on to the stage here. And thanks again to LinkedIn for hosting this recruiting episode of Locked on Spartans here. Um, look, I, we just talked about some Oregon State flips. And one of the three stars could very well be Andrew Brinson. I, that's a guy that 
quite frankly, I'm pretty high on. He's a quarterback, could play a little bit of nickel if he fills out his frame, yada, yada, yada. But amongst the other three stars, and again, there's no shortage of them. There's 18 of them in this class. Are there any others that you think are a good diamond in the rough for Michigan State right now? Well, I, I think that there's – it. Uh, he's another corner, but I like Jalen Thompson. I like the program he's from down in Murfreesboro. Riverdale's yeah. always had players. And if you're not going to have a ton of guys in the trenches, you better be good outside. That's one. Uh, the Rakeem Johnson's kind of an interesting deal. I'm curious to study more of him. Okay. But he played in Boise. I mean, how does yeah. one evaluate that? Like, Jonathan Smith – you got to give him a lot of credit in general. He's a good coach. But being at Oregon State, I think he gets a little more credit for the three stars he takes because you ain't getting the five-star kid to go mm -hmm. to Corvallis. So I'm going to give him just in gener uh, general sense a little more leeway. But again, I mean, do you think Florida and Texas are recruiting in Idaho? Probably not. So yeah, no. it's, it's interesting that kids from all over, California, Washington, all over the West Coast are going to be there. And I don't know if that will last very long. But Smith had to go where he could because, you know what, that's the kids I know. So it'll be interesting the next year or so that I think years three, four and on, they're probably more and more Midwest based. Yeah, fascinating because he hit five different time zones in this class, uh, all the four in the continental United States and then the fifth over in Hawaii. He nabbed two kids from there. So Jonathan Smith making this a global program, if you will, Brian. So look at him go. But again, we'll see how long that actually lasts and if that will be the formula to success here. But I don't know. But speaking of Midwest, and I'm sorry, I have no concept of time anymore. I can't remember if we actually talked about this. But Joe Rossi was hired as defensive coordinator not too long ago. The, of course, a former Minnesota defensive coordinator coming to Michigan State. Now, Minnesota, not necessarily like a recruiting hotbed when you think football recruiting. You don't think Golden Gophers necessarily. But Joe Rossi no. did okay there, in my opinion. What do you know about his recruiting acumen? Or are, are you high on this pick from a recruiting standpoint? Or is it kind of like, nah, I still got to see it from him? It's a little of both, but I'm, I'm a little more bullish than I thought after doing some research for two reasons. Number one, and I'm not trying to pick on them, it's hard mm -hmm. to get out-of-state kids to go to Minnesota because it's so freaking it cold. Right. And they were getting kids – like they got a kid from Washington. They got kids from all over the place that were big-body defensive linemen. And that's – you know, if you're a defensive coach, the first thing you're going to say, you may not tell everybody, okay, where, where are the defensive line? Because otherwise we got no chance here. They got yeah. some of those guys in there, and they played pretty physical football. Getting those kids there, he's a part of that process, even if it's just the evaluation, because coordinators usually are more closers than they are recruiters. So okay. how much he's good at the as being the point man, I don't know. But they they kind of look at it from a 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", range. That's what they wanted. And they played a lot of physical football with the kids they had and, and at least competed. Because at Ward only knows their offense, especially of late, was not. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Tough. like he had to coach because their offense was offensive. So it's one of yes. those kind of deals. I think that he'll do pretty well there. State okay. traditionally gets a lot of kids that are like that. And if they can get add a couple more kids like Midwest to the West Coast, East Coast, just add in, why couldn't they be a top five team in the Big Ten? They've done it before. And he's got a good mm -hmm. track record of developing anyway. So they should be fine. Yeah, that's that's funny you mentioned that because he had really good defenses at Minnesota, top 10 in the nation in some years, but took a dip last year. When you're watching the offense, it's like, well, the defense Jesus. has to play 95 snaps a game. <laughs> I mean, there's you can see why there's a dip because they got a quarterback that's skipping rocks out there to his receivers. <laughs> now, granted, that didn't help Michigan State in their game against Minnesota, but you you get the the point. Um, it was just <laughs> not not a fun time to be a Golden Gopher defender out there. Um, God, you better have great cardio though. But hopefully, things are a little different this year in the fall for Michigan State. I, I mean, I don't know how much they'll be able to hit the ground running with Rossi, but I think like with everything else, you'll probably hear this and be pretty accurate. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens in year two. This next okay. year, whatever yeah. you get out of Michigan State, you know, the, the fireball convention at your tailgate, sure. whatever it might be, you know, that that's what you should look forward to. If they win five games, that's the bonus. If they get mm -hmm. to a bowl game next year, there should be a party at your house. They should I, I and I think they can with the schedule. I mean, there's that middle stretch where they got to go to Ohio State and Oregon back to back and then go to Michigan the next week. So that's tough. But the start of the year, the non-conference is inviting and the last four games are nice. So I'm saying like, hey, I think seven and five is on the table. And when I say that, I'm looking at the Jacksonville Tax Slayer Bowl as if it's Pasadena. Like <laughs> seven and five next year. Oh, oh you're, you're not going to see me crying up and down saying, oh, that's not a good bowl game. No, I, I'm taking 
Brian, after two years of no bowls, I'm, I'm taking any bowl game <laughs> right now. If that, if that makes me a soft fan, fine. <laughs> fine. I'm a soft fan then whatever, but I just, I need to see it. I, I need to see you it. You know what? If they get to seven and five, he should be in consideration for big 10 coach of the year because just the 85 guys on scholarship and already knows if they'll even have that many at this point. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's hard to say that's a lot of things to get into place or at other mm -hmm. programs, in the big 10, they already know where they're going. They know how to all that stuff. Yeah. And with, all the conundrum with the players leaving. This is quite the undertaking. I, I think it year is. two is probably more likely for good times. Hey, we'll, we'll, we'll take it there too. Why, why not years one and two? Anyway, the, you know, I'm going to bring up a guy who uh, we talked about many times on the show. I, I think he was silver medalist to David Stone as far as like guys in the 2024 class who he mentioned the most on the show. This is Anthony Scuda Carey. Mm -hmm. Of course, committed to Michigan State for a while, then decommitted. Then the smoke was blowing, blowing back that he was going to land at Michigan State. And then, well, it ends up Georgia Tech. Now, I know you're kind of close with him. Any any idea what happened there? Like, does he just love Atlanta? Or, or what what happened with Scooter Carey here? Because there's some state fans that were holding out hope even when it seemed to be that, okay, well, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I haven't went over there since signing day, but I'm going okay. to. I'll give you the story once I get it. But when I saw that, I'm like. Oh. Same. Yeah. Same. I mean, they did a nice yeah. job with their offense, with what they've done. And they, they're built, they, they've done a nice job because that yeah. program was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not great. <laughs> they, they didn't even have a coaching problem and they had a coaching problem. They just sucked. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a great school and he's a real good academic kid. And he's at a real good academic high school. Maybe that's part of it. But okay. Yeah. I, I, that one, I was like. I didn't have an answer for it. At okay. All. Okay. So, I don't know. Because it seemed like NC State would, would be getting him, and then he cancels his Michigan State official visit to go to Texas A&M. So it's like, oh, well, Aggies are throwing a bag at him. And then, yeah, yesterday happens, and then there he is photoshopped over Georgia Tech Stadium. It's like, what? how did we get here, Anthony? How? What happened? But, okay. I mean, good for him. It's not like he landed at, I don't know, like a Division three Hope College up here. Like, it, it, it worked out for him. I mean, but it's that, – that was, a, that was a weird one, I thought. Welcome to my life. I don't envy it. I, <laughs> the way I, I uh, follow recruiting and talk about it is is more than enough for me as it is already. I, that being that far in the weeds. Uh, and one more name for you, actually. And this is, again, a guy in your neck of the woods. A guy that you were pretty high on, actually, when he committed to Michigan State. Cameron Campbell, defensive back. Again, this is another guy where late coming down to crunch time here, it seemed that, okay, well, maybe Michigan State is back in play for him. And right now, I don't even know if he's signed anywhere, actually, right now. But I know that's not Michigan State. Any, any idea what's going on there, or is that another head-scratcher? Look, with all the things that happened with Michigan State, and this has happened with a and in any school that is an NIL school slash coach changed, mm -hmm. like A&M still has a couple of elite players that are five-star kind of level guy for it, that they don't have signed, that are committed. Okay. And – this is the same deal. I think a lot of kids are just waiting to see what these staffs are like. They can sign in February. There's more this year, I think, than about any time. So whether a kid flipped or changed their mind, I'm not surprised. I, I'm, I think it's better to do that than just, you know what, I'm just going to sign with this. School. Sure. Fair so, enough. I, I do. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. That's on me. No, I was going to say, I do want to talk about just like recruiting from a broader standpoint, from a national standpoint, and also see what other teams in the Big Ten Conference really got your interest on signing day. But first, Brian, I hate to do this to you yet again, but i got to send you to the bench because I need to talk to people's ears off about FanDuel Sportsbook. You already heard me talk about FanDuel earlier this episode, guys, when we were watching that lovely Michigan State-Penn State game. Hey, I have some props out there because that is what FanDuel does best. They have bets for everything. It's not just the spreads, the over-unders. No, no, no. The player props, the touchdown props, they get it popping during college season and, of course, NFL season as well. And right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That is $150 if your team wins. Don't even worry about the spread. Don't worry about laying the points. Just look at the menu of NFL games, pick the team you like, and then bang. $5 bet wins $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and like I said, 
There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and kick off the NFL season. It's FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. And let's drag the one, the only Brian Smith back onto the stage here. And you know what? You just mentioned the February signing period. And it's kind of ridiculous, in my opinion, that they call it the early signing period, what we just wrapped up with, because pretty much every kid signs. As a matter of fact, let's just look at what Rivals has right now. Of their top 200 kids, I counted only five that did not commit anywhere on signing day. But that makes me think here, if I'm a high school kid, is it more advantageous to me to skip early signing day, go to the later period, because at this point, like Michigan State is one of these teams, there'd be a lot of teams just looking at what the best item on the shelf is and gunning after that. So if I'm looking for like a good NIL bag, isn't that going to make you more appealing by sitting out the early signing period and waiting till February, waiting until you're one of the few four stars or highly rated three stars remaining? I hope that made sense. Is that, or is that just crazy talk from my end? Well, I mean, I think there's some validity to it, but A, it depends on how much NIL each school has, and B, do you have a relationship with that coaching staff? So if you've got somewhat of a relationship and you come down to the wire with, let's say, you know, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State, mm -hmm. maybe that works out. It depends because in that case, not only do you not get the kid, he goes and plays in one of your rivals, like if you're Ohio State or something. Yeah. So that, that's a possibility. There are a few kids that are elite players that are still in they're down south where it gets real crazy in that regard. I'm curious to hear the backstory on them. Um, it will be rather extensive, I'm sure, on what their opportunities sure. will be. But, yeah, the, the secondary signing day, because there's not as much to talk about, those kids, their cell phones will explode. Okay. Because I think that's got to be Michigan State strategy now. Like, yeah, they can use some of the allotment for transfer kids. But, I mean, even Jonathan Smith just said in his press conference on Wednesday as much that they're going to be attacking here for the February window as well. So, we'll see. I don't know. That's just what I saw because last year we saw, you know, Peyton Thorne leave, Keon Coleman leave at the very end of the spring window. And Ooh. some said that, like, hey, well, they went in at that time because, well, that's when teams are the most desperate to get players. They'll offer them uh, offer the most money. So, whether there's any validity to that. That could be a different debate, but yeah, I was just thinking like, I don't know, maximize your value, maybe sit out the early signing period, but enough about that. Um, Brian, I do have a question though. Michigan State, okay, they did fine. Obviously, in my opinion, they did good this class. The rest of the Big Ten, who else punched above their weight? Of course, Ohio State's going to be always good. Michigan, they're going to be fine. Anyone else really punched above their weight in the Big Ten Conference that we should keep a closer eye on for this class, you think? Uh, I will probably make Michigan State fans angry here. Wisconsin starting to pull in some DBs that they don't normally do. They are. They've got a good coaching staff. They're not going to be friendly for the Spartans and or really anybody else. They, yeah. they still have a ways to go with what I would consider the right type of receivers. Um, okay. But they're getting there. And I'm curious to see what their NIL does because that administration is not near as aggressive as like Michigan State's, et cetera. But they need some playmaker. But defensively, they're – they're going to be pretty good. Yeah, and they're doing so well in the transfer portal, too. I think on 24-7 sports, they're rated like eighth in, in their portal class right now. But regardless, they're they're doing strong right now. And how about on the contrary? Are there any programs that you're actually kind of surprised with how little they did on signing day? Like anyone that went mm -hmm. way below their weight? <laughs> I wouldn't say way below, but like I refuse in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form to evaluate Iowa's offensive recruiting class. So I'm going to go with them just on the blind because Iowa's offensive recruiting class is probably very offensive. Yeah. Um, I even asked somebody about it. He's like, it's just same old Iowa. Somebody, that, I'm like, okay, well, I, I, I'm not going. Right. I'm, not, I'm not looking. I'm not doing <laughs> it. You, you can't make me. So that would be my guess. Now, by the way, Rayola signing with Nebraska is interesting. Yeah. He's a very talented kid. I, I don't think he's the number one player like some people think. I think that's Jeremiah okay. Smith who signed with Ohio State. But, boy, he has got a gun. Well, I mean, he's he's got a cannon, so yeah. you know we'll see, we'll see. Uh, for those who don't know, there are Michigan State fans who might like the Lions. His dad's the one that played, I believe, center oh, for yeah. the Lions for a long time. Yep. So, yeah, you got but, that right. Uh, they they have a chance now because they got a couple kids from Florida, etc. But Nebraska's still not Nebraska either. Okay, gotcha. Give it a few more years for them. Sounds like then. That's fine. Yeah. I hope they. I hope they get okay. I, of course, not when like they're on our schedule, but like it's fun when Nebraska's kind of somewhat good. It's been a while, but it's 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 fun when they're in the mix. Yeah, they've lost 
more than their share of games here in the last half decade, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do want to blow up uh, the rest of this chat, just like on a national level here, because th there's no shortage of shenanigans on signing day, of course. So I just got to ask you, like from around the country, what was your favorite signing day moment? Or do you have a few that you want to highlight? Because I mean, God, who's the kid that had the USC poster and then turn it around and then it was him committed to Oregon or something like that. I, if you have any at the top of your head, like it, it was no shortage of shenanigans on, on Wednesday. Um, The best one, is, I'll leave it in the big 10. Uh, one of my buddies covered the Jeremiah Smith ceremony. And okay. I mean, I, yeah, I was right in the middle of that. It, it, and I was at my computer, but like okay. before the ceremony, he had a Miami hat. In an Ohio State hat. When my buddy got there and he saw my buddy, he like physically ran to the locker room. Like he didn't even want to be around media. One of the coaches oh was like, God. man, he's acting weird. Like nobody knew where he was going a couple minutes before <laughs> he walked to the podium. And he's like, I know Jeremy, he's a very shy kid. Okay. Uh, great guy, but he's introverted. So it was probably hard for them. I was told even last night that he wanted to go to Miami, but his dad wanted him to go to Ohio State. He ended wow. up signing with Ohio State at like 10 o'clock at night. Yes. Because it was that the one during the ceremony, like he hovered the pen over the sheet, like they, they zoomed in really close and they saw that he didn't actually put pen to paper. That was the one. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my goal one day is to like be that stressed out on signing day in the future, like when we are gunning for, you know, higher rated kids and three stars right now. But man, I, wow, what a, what a whirlwind for Ohio State fans feel horrible for them you know don't they it's it's terrible being an ohio state fan um <sighs> lucky them uh last question i do have though really quick you don't have to say the player's name you don't have to say the school or anything but like what's the biggest nil payout that you've heard for the cycle like do, do you have a number that you've heard for any for of a high guys? school player for a high school player? yeah for a high school player yep one million Jesus Christ. Imagine being in high school with a million dollars. Jesus. Woo. If I found a $20 bill, oh my God, I was acting like I was Bill Gates out there. That's whew, 1 million. Heavens. Okay. Wow. That's great, man. Can't believe that's how much we paid for Andrew Brinson. That's crazy, man. Uh, ah, okay. wow. that's, <laughs> no, that's nuts. So, okay. Well, there you have it, folks. That's Brian Smith, our locked on recruiting expert. We are a little over on time. Sorry about that, Brian. But uh, hey, please enjoy the rest of your week. And my God, please get some rest after this recruiting week. I uh, really, really hope you are able to get some shut eye here. Thank you very much, sir. You got it. All right, gang. Until next time. Love you all. Go green.